What's up guys, this is Heat King here bringing you another Fury video on Death Stranding. E3 is near, we're getting there and it's time to start rolling out all my theories on this. And this one is going to be the big one. So in my last video, I mentioned that Death Stranding potentially is a crossover between Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill. Potentially, maybe. But now I've got another theory that's been bugging at the back of my mind for a long time now. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe this is the case. And there have been a few clues to suggest that this is actually the strongest possibility of this theory. So are you ready for it? Here it is. Kojima keeps talking about connecting with the players. Matt Mickelson has come out and said that this game is going to require, require collaboration. And then we keep hearing the word, the term bridges, which is meant to be some sort of organization in Death Stranding. So here's my theory, guys. My big theory. What if... Kojima is attempting to collaborate on a massive scale by connecting with various developers, various companies to bring together some sort of unique collaboration never attempted in the gaming industry to bring together a whole plot of gamers together to connect and build bridges with one another to create bonds. So what do I mean by that? I think it's pretty obvious what I mean by that. I'm saying that there's more than one developer potentially helping out with this game. That there is a big massive collaboration going on. That Kojima is attempting to do some sort of shared or perhaps just a gaming collaboration of sorts or universe. I don't know. It's a far-fetched crazy ass theory. But guys, it might be the right one. Hear me out, guys. Hear me out. I know what you're thinking. I'm insane. But just please, don't stop watching and just listen for a while. Kojima, back in 2012, said that he had an idea, that he was going to attempt something that could potentially get him fired from the industry. Now, what could he potentially do that could get him fired from the industry? And MGS5, for example, there was nothing in that game to suggest anything that could get him fired from that game. Now, he got fired from Konami, yeah, but I think we can all assume that maybe he walked away or he left, but I think he was technically fired, yes. Or was he? Again, that's a subject for another time. But what if this idea he had involved getting a group of people together to cooperate, to collaborate, to connect in order to build bridges with one another so they could create something Unique, something never attempted before. We've got the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've got that happening. But you don't really see any film studios coming together unless you count Sony and Marvel's little deal that they're doing and maybe the recent Fox acquisition by Disney. But that's not really cooperation. I'm talking about cooperation, something that's not been really attempted. And having a bunch of developers and companies coming together to create something unique would be an idea that's very risky very taboo in a way, in a sense, and one that could get Kojima fired or force him to leave the industry because if this backfires, then potentially you're looking at a bunch of people who are losing a lot of money if it doesn't go right. And remember, Kojima is a very respected individual. People respect him and love him. So they would trust him, right? What if that trust ends up going very wrong? It would result in making Kojima look very bad. So then, if this is the attempt, if this is the attempt by Death Stranding, right? What companies are essentially involved with this?
So, yeah. Who are the companies, potentially, that are helping Kojima with this game? That are collaborating to potentially make this idea work? Well, we'll start off with uh, the first one. Which is, we know we have to go back in time, actually, to discuss the different collaborations that Kojima has done over the years. The first one that I can think of, really, is Ubisoft when it came to Assassin's Creed. If you guys remember MGS4, he did have a little bit of collaboration going on and vice versa. You know, he ended up, he, uh, Ubisoft allowed him to basically use the Assassin's Creed skin for one of the outfits in the game. That was really the only sort of Easter egg that he managed to implement. That was the corporation uh, collaboration, if you will. And uh, Ubisoft did the same thing with one of their games. I believe it was Brotherhood when they allowed uh, you know, the riding skin to go from there. So, yeah, that was the, the only one I can think of at the time. I think there might be a bit more, but uh, that's the only one I can think of that was recent at the time that really kind of showed that Kojima was willing to work with others for fun. The second time that I can think of was a big collaboration in this case, and this was with Peace Walker involving the Monster Hunter missions. You know, that was Capcom. Kojima collaborated with Capcom and he was able to use or integrate elements of Monster Hunter into his own game for Peace Walker. And those were some pretty big missions as well. Yeah, they were sort of basically the same, but still, it's it's Monster Hunter in a Metal Gear Solid game. Like, that's a bit crazy to think of, isn't it? And it was cool and it was fun. And then, of course, uh, the next one that we can think of, the one that was recent, in fact, is Guerrilla Games. What's so... You know, what's so different about that? What's uh, the collaboration between them? It's the engine. The engine that Kojima is using for Death Stranding is the same gaming engine that Guerrilla Games used for Horizon Zero Dawn. So that's a big, massive step towards collaborating with another studio on a game. It's not their game, it's his game, but he is using their engine for that. So, you know, boom, that's, that's pretty big steps to take. But are there any more recent ones? Well, actually... There are. Let's go back to Capcom. Now, Capcom did, in fact, collaborate with Guerrilla Games afterwards. How? They, you know, the Guerrilla Games allowed Capcom to use their A1 skin for the new recent Monster Hunter Island, or was it was it Monster Hunter World, I believe? Monster Hunter World. I still haven't played it yet. I bought it a month ago and it's still there. I've got so many other games to play, but <laughs> let's cut to that. Their Capcom collaborated with Guerrilla Games on that. So there's a connection there that sort of connects these two with Kojima regarding that game. But then there is another collaboration in fact. If you guys remember, PT, yes? One of the developers that worked on PT, the, the playable teaser or the Silent Hill demo, if you will, ended up working for Capcom on one of their DLCs for Resident Evil 7. Now, this is where it gets a bit weird. The DLC for Resident Evil 7 that this developer worked on was End of Zoe, which didn't end up being a very psychological-driven horror game. No, the DLC for that was more of a beat-them-up combat-slash-sci-fi type of game instead of being the horror game that we were promised. When we heard that uh, a developer from PT was going to work on it, they, it was said that uh, he was going to apply the same psychological aspects from that demo onto the game, but that was never the case. The demo, the DLC that we ended up playing was nothing like the PT demo that we played. And isn't it a bit strange how similar the Resident Evil 7 demo was to the PT demo when we got it? At the time when the Resident Evil 7 was being developed, it was called Kitchen. That was its prototype or hidden code name, Kitchen. And the way it was revealed to be a Resident Evil 7 during its marketing was, was just genius. When you look at it, you wouldn't imagine Resident Evil 7. In fact, there were a lot of vibes that reminded people of PT. Now, this is just a theory here. What if Kojima at the time advised Capcom on that? He's done advice before. He did advise uh, the developers on Castlevania Lords of Shadow.
uh, when he refer you know when he advised them on how to design the main character and he threw some Metal Gear Solid little Easter eggs in there. So yes, Kojima is one of those developers that will advise other developers on what to do if they need it. Is it possible, perhaps, that uh, Kojima advised them? Now, do keep in mind, the kitchen demo supposedly came first, before PT. What, well, what if, uh, at the time, maybe the two were collaborating and Kojima liked the idea of the kitchen demo and decided to use it for PT, perhaps? Maybe that's what inspired it, because the idea is the two demos are very, very similar to some aspects. Though one game ends up being a hallucination sci-fi horror and the other one is a supernatural horror game or is it the reason i'm saying is it is because it's just weird that this developer that worked on the pt demo which was supposed to be a psychological supernatural horror game ended up working on a dlc that wasn't psychological or a supernatural horror game but a sci-fi combat action sort of game and isn't it weird how death stranding is being referred to as a sci-fi action game When a lot of the elements we have seen seem very psychological and very horror themed. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Where we're, they're saying one thing and we're seeing something completely different. What if PT, for example, wasn't a horror game? What if everything that we saw happen in that game was actually hallucination? What if it was a sci-fi game? What if PT was never Silent Hill and it was Death Stranding to begin with? Again, there are hints to hint at this, but... uh. Again, we're not really talking about that topic now. We're talking about collaborations. So yes, there's one collaboration there. You have a developer from uh, PT that ended up working on Resident Evil 7. So that's another one there. You have Guerrilla Games and their engine being used on uh, Death Stranding. You have uh, Kojima who's worked with Capcom in the past, allowing him to do Monster Hunter missions. And Capcom in return worked with Guerrilla Games which allowed him to use the skin, etc, etc. What other sort of collaborations are going on? Well... There's uh, Square Inx. Square Inx announced a game, I believe it was either last year or the year before. And uh, this game was worked on uh, by people who specifically asked Kojima's permission if they could use help from one of his colleagues, uh, Yoji. If you guys know, he's the uh, he's one of the co-creators, technically. He's the uh, artist, the designer for the Metal Gear Solid characters. And he ended up working on this new game of theirs called Left Alive, where he helped design some of the characters. Now, if you guys have looked at Left Alive, it looks very awfully similar, doesn't it? Now, we're told that Left Alive is actually uh, set in the front or font mission universe of games so it's part of uh, this different series of games and yet when you look at it it looks strangely like Metal Gear Solid I think some people have even pointed out that it looks like it's potentially using the Fox engine and the fact that these developers had to get permission from Kojima I mean what kind of other permission did they have to get from him the fact that Yoji is working on this when he's also working on potentially Death Stranding. I mean, when you look at some of the character designs, they look like character designs from uh, Metal, Metal Gear Solid 4 that were left unused. So there's obviously a connection there. And then Left Alive, Death Stranding. It almost seems like these two games are the very opposite of each other, are they not? It's very strange and very weird. Is there some sort of collaboration going on there properly? Is this going to tie in potentially? I don't know. Let's keep on going. So, we have Capcom. We have Ubisoft from a while ago. Nothing recent so far, but you could potentially include them. Or maybe not. But we do have Guerrilla Games. And we potentially do have Square Inks as part of this collaboration. Who else could be collaborating with Kojima on Death Stranding? Well, Kojima joined in 2015, right, I believe? Or was it 2016? Either way, that's when Death Stranding was announced. What other game was announced during that time period, but was in development for a while? And who is also working for Sony on an exclusive? God of War. I know what you're thinking. How has this anything to do with Kojima? How is this connected? 
Well, think about it. Kojima came and worked on Sony between that period when God of War was announced. Now, there was a lot of changes they could have done to that game in that time. And I think some changes were in fact made. One of these things that they did and add was the fact, and it's pretty much been revealed, that the, the character, the boy child, uh, 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 Aphros or whatever his name was, he was referred to throughout the entire production as boy. Why? Because the character didn't have a name at the time. They didn't actually name their character until, I think, towards the end of development or sometime before the end of development where they finally named him and where they had to write an entire backstory towards the end of the game why he was called that, which actually makes a lot of sense now when you think about it. Like, why was that even added in so late into the game? And now you know. So what else could they have potentially added in late in the game? Well, when you play God of War, you get to a certain point in the game where you find out about the different realms and mythologies that exist. And you find out that all of these mythologies are connected. Now, during interviews, recent interviews before the game came out, I think a week or a month before the game officially came out, uh, it was discussed that they were thinking of using either Norse mythology and that they're also thinking of using Egyptian and Mayan mythology or realms for their future games. Now, one mythology was not mentioned and it's one that you don't know about until you play the game. And when you play the game, you come across to this point in the game where you see that the Norse, that the Greek, that the Mayan potentially, and that the Egyptian mythology realms are connected. But there's another one that's never been revealed by the developers, and it's only revealed when you play the game, which is Japanese mythology. So the Japanese mythology, the Japanese realm, exists in the God of your War universe. Now, was this a late addition? Was this something that was added in very late into the game? And why would it be added in? What could convince the developers to do this? And my guess would be Kojima. He came into Sony. He talked with the developers. Obviously, there would be some sort of cooperation and collaboration and talks going on and meetings and uh, getting friendly. Maybe that was one of his ideas and he suggested it to them and they used it. That's just my theory, of course. But does that mean that perhaps they're working together somehow? Maybe. Maybe not, but they are both working with Sony on making exclusive titles. So, and just like with Kojima working with Guerrilla Games, there is a potential possibility there that they're collaborating, big or small. So then, this brings up a very interesting thing. Is Death Stranding the first game in the world that's been, you know, made by a bunch of different developers coming together to sort of throw, I mean, even if they are, what does this mean for the game? What could it entail? Think of it like this. Death Stranding is meant to be some sort of game that's going to explore space. It's going to explore wormholes, dimensions, parallel universes, potentially, I don't know, alternative realities. Now, one of my other theories was, of course, that this was supposed to be some sort of MGS and uh, Silent Hill crossover. Now, what if that is the case? But also, what if it's going to cross over with other games. Imagine this. Imagine you're playing the game and during the game you go through different realities or you get little hints or you get little things happening that alter the environment, that alter the reality. Maybe a rift opens up and suddenly you've got one of these big metal dinosaurs from Horizon Dawn coming through and attacking you. Maybe you go through a different reality or different dimension and suddenly you're using Kratos' axe. Or maybe you're going through and you suddenly are on a tropical island and there are monsters from the Monster Hunter world chasing you. Or maybe there is some sort of infection going on that seems very close to the infection in Resident Evil 7. Maybe you fight zombies. I don't know. I'm just saying it's, it's a possibility. Maybe there's more to this game than meets the eye. And maybe this is what this game is. Maybe this is the idea Kojima had all those years ago where he wants a whole bunch of people not just in the sense of the word when he says he wants people to connect, but he also means everyone to connect. He wants these developers to come together to connect to make something unique for his game. And at the same time, he's going to have all these different players interact and connect with one another to create this unique experience never attempted before. We know there is a collaboration that's supposed to go on with this game. Like PT, when he was discussing it, he said that he wanted people to get together to solve the puzzles. So obviously, there's going to be some form of puzzles in this game that are going to require collaboration. And that's the key word, collaboration, connecting, building bridges. There's more to this than meets the eye. If anything, this almost feels very similar to something like uh, Metal Gear Solid's 
Outer Haven. If you remember four, you had Outer Haven and it had like a bunch of different subdivisions, PMCs that worked under it. You had the main focus there, the main company, and you had these four different ones that connected to it. Is this something like that? Where Death Stranding, or in this case, Sony or Kojima Productions is at the center and it's got its webs connected to these different developers that have come together to sort of collaborate on this big project. I don't know, it's a crazy mega-ass theory. But what if that is the case? Obviously, I don't think we're going to find this out at all during uh, E3. Or maybe we will, I don't know. Maybe that will be the big, massive surprise. I mean, think about it. You've got Sony revealing this game with all of these different developers there. And we still don't know about some of the things that are happening. We still don't know anything about Left Alive. We don't know how far this collaboration thing going, is going on. Maybe... Maybe it's just a small thing again. Maybe it's like Capcom where they allowed him to use the Monster Hunter missions. Maybe it's just like that. You're going to play the game and you're going to get little Easter eggs from there. So maybe it's not a big collaboration. But yet him collaborating with Guerrilla Games and using their engine. That's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty big, isn't it? Just saying. I mean, it's a, it's a food for thought. So it's something to think about. And maybe that's how Metal Gear and Silent Hill will be used as well. Maybe it's just a small thing and they'll be able to tie into that. I don't know. But uh, again, this could be the idea that Kojima is going for. Because what else could be so big, so taboo, so unheard of that could get him fired from the industry? Or make or force him to leave the industry if it doesn't work out? Maybe it is this. I don't know. I'm just a crazy fanboy making up crazy ass fan theories. It's not like it's going to actually happen. But can you can you imagine if it did? Like, holy crap, can you imagine you're just sitting down watching E3 and suddenly Kojima comes in with all the different heads of the developers and they reveal that, yeah, this is our game that's been collaborated on with various people from different uh, studios, except from Konami and EA because nobody likes them at the moment. But uh, <laughs> can you just imagine that? I can. But that's only because I'm insane. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. Tell me your thoughts down below. As always, like and subscribe whenever. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care. And bye.